So in one of my previous videos I did, uh, which was about this little uh, single acting steam engine, and uh, at the time I thought it would be nice to actually build something else, you know, for, um, so this can run something. And uh, I was originally going to build um, like a little sawmill made from one of these uh, high speed steel cut off uh, saw blades. Uh, but in the end I decided I wasn't going to do that. I thought I'd, uh, I'd see if I could come up with something else. So, um, well I have. I've, uh, I've built something else. And, um, well, let me show you what it is. Now I guess most of you who sort of live out in the USA will recognise recognize what this machine does. It is of course uh, an oil pump jack and uh, these are designed to, uh, to pump oil out the ground you know on the oil fields across the, uh, well, across the USA and across the world as well and um, now the idea of these is they need to run really nice and slow because obviously it's, uh, it's quite a heavy process to pull the oil out of the ground um, so obviously with this engine it needs to run fairly quickly because because it one because it's single acting so it needs enough sort of momentum to be able to return the empty cylinder uh, so it does run fairly fast so um, with the use of a I've made a tiny little pulley little tiny pulley there which is a uh, it's about half an inch, maybe a little bit less. I can't remember what size I made it. Uh, this will drive via this belt onto the uh, onto a big pulley there. If I can get the belt on, and then obviously that's then down to another reduction pulley, which drives the uh, the the bigger drive uh, drive wheel there, and obviously turns the um, turns the oil pump over. So um, I'll just get it fixed to the to the pump. Got a little machine screw to just to go in there. Just give me a second. Okay, so now that's uh, connected up. Let's refit the uh, the drive belt. Now these drive belts actually, um, I've always struggled to find the right size drive belts for things. You know, I make something and I need a drive belt of a certain size and you know, I order all sorts of random drive belts and stuff like that off the internet and of course when they turn up they're never quite the sizes that, um, that you'd hope it to be. So I recently discovered, uh, if I can find it, this uh, polyurethane um, belt and basically that's like, you know, there's a couple of metres in there. And uh, what you do is you, you can cut it, uh, cut it to any any length that you want, and uh, you simply join it by, um, you know, using a, a razor blade or something that's been heated up, and you basically melt the ends together and push it together, and the and the thing sticks together, and then you just trim off the uh, the sort of seam, and uh, you, you've got a belt any size that you want. Really useful stuff, actually. I didn't know that stuff existed, so uh, nice to find that. Anyway, what I'll do. Um, well, like I say, yeah, because this is um, it's not a very powerful engine, and obviously there's a lot of uh, sort of mechanics to turn here. I've made everything in the, in the uh, pump jack uh, rather than using like phosphor bronze um, bushes that I'd, I'd normally make all my bearings from. I actually decided to buy these uh, little tiny roller ball bearings, and uh, all the shafts are um, six millimeter, uh, like silver steel. The rest of it's all made out of aluminium except for these two pieces, the two rods there, which are actually made out of brass. Uh, but yeah, the whole thing's built out of aluminium, except for obviously the uh, the axles and uh, the bearings, which uh, which I've bought. Now there's bearings in there, there's bearings inside the actual um, shafts for the, for the uh, pulleys, uh, and there's bearings there as well. So the whole thing actually is really quite, um, you know, it's really, it's really quite loose, as you can see. There's very, very little sort of uh, friction, so that basically removes all the, well, as much of the friction as possible out of this to allow this little tiny little engine to be able to power it. So I'll just get a bit of compressed air onto the engine. And uh, I'll run it up. The in shot, yep. Oh, I haven't had my compressor on. I need to put my compressor on, just a minute. 
Okay, so now I've got a full tank of air in the compressor. Save it starting up uh, sort of halfway through the video I'm trying to shoot. And we'll just get the engine ticking over. And I'll run it down as slow as it'll go until the engine kind of stalls. Oh, it's still coping about there. That, that's, that's a fairly sort of nice speed, I think, for the pump jack. So like I say, it's all built out of aluminium. Uh, it's all been painted up. The only bit I've left is that bit there. Uh, I might get around to painting that yellow one day, but um, what I've done, I've pressed the bearings in and I couldn't get them back out easily without, I didn't want to damage it. So, you know, it meant masking up the bearings. I just couldn't be asked if I was honest. So uh, maybe one day I'll get around to that or I might just leave it as it is. It's sort of, uh, it's quite nice to see that it is made out of aluminium. But yeah, there you go. It's, um, a nice oil pump jack. So it's nice to finally give this little uh, single acting mill engine uh, something to do rather than just chug away on its own. And um, obviously that's why I've uh, sort of matched the colours to the to the engine, except for the green. Thought I'd go for a slightly more industrial, darker looking green because obviously these things are fairly industrial machines. So now all I need to do, I've given the engine something to do, now I need the pump to do something. Nice cup of tea. I think I might call this the tea jack. Cheers, and thanks for watching. Wow, that was flipping disgusting.